चक्षुन्मीत तस्म श्रीगुरव नम मूक कौति वाचाल पंगु लंगयते गिरी यत्तमह वंदे श्रीगुर दीनता हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा इन दिस पोस्ट ऑफ श्रावण स्मरण वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग टू टॉक अबाउट महाजनस ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम सिक्स्थ कैंटो थर्ड चैप्टर ट्वेंटी एथ ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट श्लोकस सो लास्ट टू पोस्ट वी हैव कवर्ड अबाउट ब्रह्मा एंड शिवा टुडे वी विल कवर अबाउट नारदा सो बिफोर वी गो टू डिस्कस अबाउट नारदा वील अगेन चैंड दैट श्लोका फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम सिक्स कैंटो थर्ड चैप्टर ट्वेंटी एथ एंड ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट श्लोकस स्वयं नारद शंभो कुमार कपिलो मनु प्रहलादो जनको भीष्मो भीष्मीर्वयम द्वादिशे विजामो धर्म भागवत भटा गुह्यम विशुद्ध दुर्बोधम यमृतमश्नुते so here the context is uh, ajamila charitra so after ajamila is taken to vishnu loka emaduta is actually who went there to get him to emaloka could not succeed because ajamila was chanting the name of the lord when he was passing away and so emaduta's messengers come and discuss the philosophy behind that with emaraja and emaraja among his instructions is one of this instruction which he talks about 12 mahajanas whom whose footsteps we should follow or we should follow the footsteps of those mahajanas who have followed these mahajanas in the parampara system so in this context we have uh, today a great another exalted great mahajana narada narada is basically a great devotee we all know about narada the moment uh, we hear about narada we remember that narada is one great devotee who has access to the all the parts of the cosmic universe he is always in touch with lord he is always in the mood of devotion he is always in the mood of chanting and glorifying the names of the lord always traveling and always helping people to come to devotional path and apart from that he is also called as devarshi that means he is rishi is sage devarshi he is sage among the gods so we can imagine his exalted position and uh, in all the great epic movements which are uh, documented in the shrimad bhagavatam or in several of the smrutis narada's presence is always there i will just take few uh, very big significant uh, situations narada was also one of the instrumental personalities in transforming a hunter called by name valmiki to a great sage and also inspired him to write compile ramayana we all know that story and uh, narada also was very much instrumental in meeting vyasadev and encouraging him motivating him and actually compelling him to write and compile shrimad bhagavatam when vyasadev after uh, having written so many puranas upanishads compiling the vedas still he was not very satisfied and he was not able to know the reason for his dissatisfaction in all the things which he has written previously has basically covered four things dharma artha moksha kama dharma artha kama moksha dharma is religiosity artha is economic development dharma artha 
kama is how to fulfill the desires and then moksha is liberation so narada devashi narada approached uh, vyasadev and engaged in a very nice philosophical dialogue with him and brought out the root cause of his dissatisfaction to tell him to the fact that he has not written a scripture which is entirely devoted to pure devotional service which is beyond dharma artha kama moksha which elevates a person to pure devotion and it transcends a person from all these four uh, normally talked about things in the puranas and uh, other itihasas so in that way narada played a very significant role to tell vyasadeva on what he should do to satisfy himself and to sat and to basically meet the purpose for which vyasadeva has come also so by taking the instructions of narada vyasadeva has compiled this fantastic uh, purana called bhagavata which basically which talks about the several past times of lord shri krishna predominantly centered around lord shri krishna who is the supreme personality of the godhead and other part of bhagavatam talks about the stories of the great devotees and that's why we have prahla charitra dhruva charitra gajendra moksha and so many of them and each wonderfully gives us so much of details about pure devotional service so in the four that way narada is always remembered as a great uh, devotee wherever he goes the outcome is that person or the people surrounding him progress towards more into devotional service so in that way we should thank we should bow down we should pray to narad so that we can also move forward in devotion service because narad is such a personality that he meets anyone of uh, any type any caste any creed any position of this in the society and meets him and then transforms him to a great devotee so narada apart from always uh, chanting the holy names of the lord because he is a great devotee when it came to talk about the definition a scientific and a rational analysis of what is bhakti per se obviously the best person to to be approached is narada vyasadeva has compiled bhagavat which is known as amala purana it is known to show us the path of devotional service but to define what is devotion is what we need to know and for this reason narada has compiled narada bhakti sutras sutra means a, a very detailed instruction but put it into a very capsule form so most of the sutras in narada bhakti sutras are just one line and half a line thing there are few exceptions uh, to those so narada bhakti sutras there are about 80 plus sutras it, according to my memory it's about 84 and iskon found rachari ac bhakti vedanta swami shila prabhupad has wonderfully translated those uh, narada bhakti sutras and it's available in the form of a book and uh, the evolution of that narada bhakti sutra is also very nice it is not that just narada expressed his opinions about what is devotion but the story goes that he has basically initially compiled what is devotion from so many great rishis so many great personalities and clubbed them and given his own opinion and his own knowledge into this narada bhakti sutras so today we will cover one of such a sutra which is slightly an exception to the normal sutras which are very brief so along with my email post of the youtube link i will also attach one document a pdf document which gives the complete uh, all the sut uh, narada bhakti sutras so this sutra is an exception because it's slightly longer it basically talks about the devotion service and how they can manifest in us when we move forward in our devotional service because each one of us are an individual we each one is an individual soul we have our own conditioning of uh, different modes of nature mode of goodness mode of ignorance mode of passion 
and also our own characteristic of a personality is different. Each person is pretty unique. And so how they relate with Supreme Personality Godhead can also be different. So Narada basically says, although devotion service is one, it becomes manifested in 11 forms of attachment, Asakti. So this Narada Bhakti Sutra 82 has a word which keeps on repeating called Asakti. Asakti is attachment. In a way, attachment can also be synonymously used with love because love, if you don't have love, you don't have attachment. If you don't have attachment, you don't have love. But Asakti is slightly a higher degree of love where you are completely immersed and completely connected. So there are 11 things. First is, uh, and it can, one can have two or three manifestations or one can have only one manifestation of devotion service. But basically, for our understanding of devotion, he has told that there are 11 forms of attachment that can be manifested in devotees. One is to his glories, glorious qualities, to his beauty, to worshipping him, to remembering him, to serving him, to reciproc reciprocating him with as a friend, to care him as a parent, to deal with him as a lover, to surrender oneself to him, to being absorbed in thought of him, to experiencing separation from him. So these are the 11 uh, manifestations of a, a, devotion, a, a devotion, devotion or a devotion service among the devotees. So one can be attached or one can be interested in one or two or may, many of them. But uh, in general we see uh, some people, great personalities get attached to one or two particular uh, of that and they become exemplified uh, for that. For example, to be uh, reciprocating with him as friend means we immediately remember Arjuna, to caring, caring him as a parent we remember Ishoda, dealing him with a, as a lover of course Srimati Radharani. To surrender oneself to him, uh, surrender is a uh, Hanuman or Hanuman is in Dasya, Vibhishan is one example. And to being absorbed uh, in always in thought of him, uh, if we can think of Narada, we can think of so many other uh, people who are always absorbed in thinking about him. To his glorious qualities, there are other devotees who always chant his uh, glories. So like that, uh, we can uh, see those devotees. And once we see their ex experiences, their behavior, we can relate to them that this is an asakti, this is the nature, this is the type of asakti in which they are quite uh, dominant in their behavior and characteristic. For example, uh, the eleventh one is to experience uh, separation from him. Is this, uh, this is the devotional attribute which uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has displayed predominantly, that he was always in the mood of separation and he was telling uh, the, uh, the devotees, demonstrating to the devotees around him that how powerful it could be that to feel that we are disconnected from the Lord and we always are eager to get connected and feeling always that uh, that we are our life is void without Lord being present in front of us. So like this Narada has given a wonderful uh, knowledge what, are, what is known as the nuts and bolts of devotion in Narada Bhakti Sutra. So in that way again we should bow down to Narada, worship him, always remember his glories, always try to follow his footsteps so that we can be closer to Lord. And Narada apart from uh, uh, Bhakti Sutras, he has also compiled what is known as Narada Pancharatra. In the Narada Pancharatra also you, we get wonderful uh, details about devotion. One very famous uh, Shloka is what I wanted to share with you and this is the Shloka which uh, Iskar Samsapakacharya A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada often uh, quoted when he has to talk about devotion, particularly when he has to talk about the definition of bhakti, definition of devotion or definition of devotional service or definition of bhakti. Uh, the Shloka goes like this, Sarvopadhi Vinir Muktam Tatparatvena nirmalam Rishi kena Rishi kesha Sevanam bhakti ruchate 
सर्वोपाधि विनिर्मुक्त तत्पर निर्मल the meaning is that uh, the important message is that Rishi Kena Shikesha. Rishi Kesha means another uh, name of uh, the Lord who is, the, which is called master of the senses. He is the master of all the senses. So if we engage Rishi Kesha, our senses, if we engage our senses to the master of the senses, then that becomes devotional service. And if we engage our senses to our sense gratification, our bodily sense gratification, which we normally do uh, in this material life, which we are more concerned about our body, its well-being, its health, whatever things we don't doubt it, those activities to the service of the Lord, and that becomes illusion or maya. And this is a similar thing that uh, at a deeper philosophical and higher philosophical level, which also comes in the second shloka of Chetur Shloki Srimad Bhagavatam, which we have covered where Krishna says anything that is not in relationship with me is like a reflection in dark. With Hayatam yet prati yata, not prati yata chatmani. So that shloka we also covered in one of the posts. So in the Sarvopadi Vinir Muktam Tat Paratvena Nirmalam Rishi Kera Shikesha Sevanam Bhakti Ruchate. Sevanam Bhakti Ruchate means this is what is known as devotion or this is what is known as the pure devotional service. This is the definition of the pure devotional service. What is it? To engage our services. To the master the sorry, master of the senses so devotion service, service to the supreme lord means engagement of all our senses in the service and in such service there are two important features first one sarvopadhi vinen muktam this is easy to say very difficult to practice in our material life sarvopadhi upadhi means uh, designations sarva means all designation vinen muktam to give away to get detached from all the designations. This could be a material designation. Typically, I am a doctor, I am an engineer, I am that, I am this, which is a, without which we are almost cannot function in this material world. But at least internally, uh, in our consciousness, we should know that we are nothing of those because once our body gets finished, when we die, all those upadhis will go away. So only upadhi, only designation that, we, that gets carried life after life, life after life, in any form of life that we have is that we are the servants of the Lord. So servant upadhi, servant designation that I am the servant of the Lord, I am Krishna's and Krishna is mine, that upadhi is the one which carries us forever. But all the other upadhis are very temporary and they are limited to this life. But having said that, it's very easy to say this uh, important thing that sarva upadhi, vinun muktam bhakt, but once we know this definition of bhakti, so even when we are in an external world, we say that I am this or I am that, internally, consciously and subconsciously, we will be aware that it, I am only telling this because I have to deal this, in, in, I have to deal the materialistic activities in a materialistic way externally, but not getting attached. If you get too much attached to these upadhis, that will become a big hindrance for our devotional service. So, when we take up to devotional service, we should remember that we are the servant of the Lord, but not that I am an engineer, I am a rich man, I have got this, I have got this. We should slowly try to get away from that. Again, I say, even though when we say it externally, for whatever reason, subconsciously we should be aware that this is not correct. So. There are two important aspects. First one must be we should be purified from all designations or we should be, uh, we should get rid of those re designations. Purified is again dovetailing of whatever we have, whatever we do, whatever activities that we perform, if we perform towards the Lord and then the Sarvopadi issue cannot come to us. And second is that our senses has to be utilized for the master of the senses. Sarvopadhi vinirmuktam tat paratvena nirmalam. Nirmalam means something connected with purity. So our upadhis have to be purified and we should be mukti from our uh, designations. So this is what a Narada has given us in the beautiful form in the Narada Pancharatra shlokas and this is one shloka which Srila Prabhupada has very often uh, quoted in, in order to define bhakti. So we bow down to that Mahajan. Swayambhur Narada Shambho Narada 
who has given this wonderful shloka sarvopadhi vinirmuktam tat paratvena nirmalam shikena shikesha sevanam bhakti ruchite so when narada met uh, vyasadeva and history of narada in shrimad bhagavatam comes in the very beginning because he was one of those important personalities who has actually inspired vyasadeva to compile shrimad bhagavatam so his story comes in shrimad bhagavatam in the very early chapters itself in the first canto 4th 5th 6th we get a very vivid description about narada and vyasadeva's uh, discussions and this subject matter also of their discussions and how was vyasadeva felt dissatisfied how narada inspired him it is a subject matter of discussion and elaboration uh, by so many great acharyas which they thought was a very important subject matter that has to be uh, read by everybody and why telling after convincing uh, vyasadeva on uh, to compile amala purana like shrimad bhagavata narada also tells his story in brief which is also very important uh, his story of his previous life narada we see him as we know him as a very great devotee who has a direct access to the supreme lord in fact was a maid servant in his previous but in his previous millennium birth and he he was a son of a very poor maid servant and somehow or other uh, by his great fortune uh, when the place where they were staying in a small place uh, the rishis came and it was chaturmasya and so rishis say a great sage of self realized personality stayed there and narada being a young boy uh, all that he did was to do some service physical service to them and aid remnants of their food that was offered to god and which rishis were taking and that had actually purified him and he had also got knowledge about those sages and after that it by the will of the lord uh, his only he had mother and no father uh, and uh, his mother passes away by the snake bite and narada in fact at that time uh, feels that it's a blessing of the lord and then he walks away from home and he does a meditation and lord appears before him and then uh, he gives him an instruction and he disappears also telling that uh, it is he will not give darshan to anybody who has got even the faintest of the material attachment and then he blesses him saying that uh, in his next life what he will be so narada story is very important on how he meditated and how he visualized the lord and what he felt when he visualized when he practically seen the lord and how bad he felt when lord disappeared from his presence and uh, it's very interesting thing that one can read in shrimad bhagavatam uh, first canto fourth fifth sixth chapters of wonderful uh, shlokas a beautiful purports by iskon samsthapak acharya ac bhakti vedanta swami and that's why narada is always there in many places in shrimad bhagavatam he is there in dhruva charitra he is telling dhruva how lord vishnu will look like when dhruva is about to meditate he is there in uh, he has got a very significant role to play in prahla charitra so many places we keep seeing narada and every time when narada appears there there is always a lesson to be learned particularly with respect to getting connected with lord and with respect to bhakti so in that mood of devotion in that mood of great gratitude and submission to the philosophy that narada has given us we we'll just chant this narada pancharatra shloka once again sarvopadhi vinirmuktam tatparatvena nirmalam rishikena rishikesha sevanam bhakti ruchate hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 rama hari rama 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 hari hari i would like to extend this session by few more minutes i'll take a bit of a liberty to tell one small realization of mine uh, i basically come from south india a place a state known as andhra pradesh and where which was very popular in the film industry when we were ranked for the great uh, social pictures and uh, pictures which related to our philosophy and great stories of ramayana mahabharat and bhagavat there are many great actors great poets who have penned that 
but unfortunately i do not know why it happened uh, somehow as the days went by the depiction of narada's character was always shown as the one who creates problems and uh, who who who's, who's, who's very characterization is 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 given in a, a form of a humorous touch and uh, my knowledge of narada was also like that uh, till i came uh, in touch with Srimad Bhagavatam and till I came in touch with the devotees of International Society of Krishna Consciousness and Acharyas, the spiritual leaders, spiritual teachers with who, uh, whose lectures I heard and whole of my impression of Narada has changed and I felt very sorry that throughout life till that point I came to know who is Narada, who actually is Narada I was always thinking him as a comical character uh, and who always creates problems and there are funny situations I'm not sure why it happened when it happened in the history of the movies. I my father was also a, a very well known uh, stage artist. He had a very great interest in dramas, radio and stage dramas. Apart from his normal uh, office work, so he used to take us to many dramas, which were held in a, a very famous place called Ravindra Bharat in Hyderabad. There were a lot of talented actors, and in those days, in early 60s, when I was an young kid. Even in those days, where there was no commercialization of, of any sort, when in those days where there's a lot of uh, prominence was given for genuinity, I still remember to have seen dramas on stage where Narada was shown as some kind of a humorous character. I do not know if my if my father were alive as of today, I could have definitely asked him why it happened like that. But later, later, yes, it became it became worse. So my only humble submission is that if you have such feeling, please remove it. Please remove it. It's actually, in fact, a kind of a sinful to think about Narada like that. Such a great and exalted devotee who has given us such a great knowledge, who is instrumental for us to get Rama and who is instrumental for us to get Srimad Bhagavatam. So we need to know him in a proper perspective. And it also becomes our prime duty to tell our kids two things. Who is Narada? And what is his greatness? Open the books of Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, fourth, fifth, sixth chapter to start with. And also not to rely completely on TVs or movies for getting the spiritual knowledge. If you want to get an authentic spiritual knowledge about Bhagavad Gita, about Rama, and about uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, we should open the Moon Granth and then we should read. Otherwise, we will get caught up in this commercialized unauthenticated, unauthorized stories which are mainly meant for entertainment and com our kids, our younger generation people will be completely be misled. So while I am talking with Narada, I am sorry that I have just taken a bit of liberty to kind of a in a, in a preaching more than in a, than in a sharing more because this has been my realization. If I were not to be getting in touch with people who knew about Narada, who has revealed that to me, I would have been in a very wrong assumption about under our assumption and understanding of who Narada is. So, in that uh, humble uh, request, uh, humble begging petition, I request you to do what uh, you are supposed to do. If you already know it, it's fine. Think that it's a revision. If you have learned something new in this, uh, kindly share it with others, particularly with the younger generation of people to remember Narada in that very important devotional mood in which he used to always chant the names of Narayana and he was always connected to the Lord and he has always told us what is exactly is the Bhakti Yoga process. So one more time we will repeat the shloka of Narada Pancharatra. Sarvopadhi vinir muktam Tatparapena nirmalam Rishi kena rishi kesha Sevanam bhakti ruchate Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari 